I played this hand in the 100 Russian Cash Challenge yesterday. And we flatted a 3-bet with pocket jacks. Button versus small blind. Now this is a 4-bet, in theory, at 100 BB stack depth. I think at the stack depth, it's okay to call. The flop came ace-jack-9, villain bet big. We'll look at a solve in a minute. Have a look at the sizing. Is this a thing? Is there an exploitative reason to do this? We called. The turn was a six of diamonds. Villain checked and we bet. Villain called. Then on the river, they checked. We went all in. And Villain time banked for about 45 seconds. And while in the tank here, begun typing in chat. And they said, Oh man. Jarrett man, huh? Don't know if I can exploitatively fold this versus you, Jarrett man. Then they time bound for another 20 seconds. And then they called. With Ace King. So, perhaps by being Carrot man? And sounding like Jarrett man? Being some kind of imposter fraud? I was able to get called in a spot where maybe I wouldn't have if this was an anonymous pool. Or if he knew it was just meek little carrot man who of course doesn't ever bluff this spot but in a, on a serious note i don't think i bluff this spot very often i think this is a really hard spot to bluff in and i would put it to you audience that this call's terrible like really really losing against the average player and probably losing against me and maybe even bad against the real jarrett man as strong and as aggressive as a player that he is, this is a really difficult spot to bluff in. Okay, what have you got here that's bluffing? What do you arrive here with on this line that can bluff this spot? Well, your 10-8, king-10, and queen-10 all hit stuff. Queen-10 feels to me like a bluff that you would use on the river. Jack-10 probably isn't betting turn, so you don't even get there with that. So the second pair become your bluffing range here? Do you have like eight, seven of diamonds? I guess so. You can have a little bit like that. Those kind of combos. But overall, this is what we'd call an airless landing range spot. The landing range on Carrot Corner in the Carrot Poker School is the term for the range that we arrive or villain arrives on a node with. So when we arrive on this river, having called a big flopsy bit, then bet the turn and then everything kind of complete straight-wise. We arrive with a landing range that's basically devoid of air. This is really problematic. So I want to investigate, with the help of Pile Solver here, what is Button supposed to be bluffing on this node? What is Ace King meant to do at this SBR with this sizing? Is Ace King even allowed to call the river in theory? And if so, how bad a punt is it against a normal human, against me, and against someone like Jarrett, man? I would put it to you that it's bad against all three, but who knows? Maybe, maybe real high stakes crushers are bluffing enough in this spot. I just kind of doubt it, because it's super difficult for any mortal to do. Let's take a look in the solver. So the first thing that you'll notice is that you're not meant to use a big sizing in this spot. It's not a thing, right? Now, that doesn't mean that it's bad because there are certain things that never happen at equilibrium that wouldn't be a big EV loss if you did start doing them. And there are other things that are good exploitatively, even if they are an EV loss at equilibrium in a sim. But the reason for this is that when your opponent flats here, button versus small blind, and you're the small blind three better, their range is actually going to be kind of polarized. Not very polarized, right? But if you look at the in-position range here, you'll see that it doesn't have a whole lot of yellow shades here of medium EV hands. It has some incredibly powerful hands like Ace-Queen Plus. Ace-Queen is kind of mediocre, but it's the star of the powerful hands, you could say. And then it has some really awful hands like third pair, second pair, and then some just like totally abysmal hands like under pair. And then it has some immortal nuts like ace jack and nines and jack nine and stuff like that and ace nine. So when you bet big into this range, you begin to cause it to split. 
in a way that doesn't render very many combos indifferent and isn't particularly challenging to play against. Now, the solver doesn't care about challenging. That's not why it adopts the small sizing. But the general rule in the Carrot Poker School, Grade 2, I think this is from Lecture 2 of Grade 2, although I could be wrong. It's called Clark's Theorem, because I'm arrogant and like to name stuff after myself. And it basically says that when your opponent's range is polarizing like this, it's like kind of naturally polarized by a flop texture, you should use a small sizing. That makes a lot of sense, right? When you understand the basic mechanics of the game and what it means to bet into a polarized range. So right off the bat, we're going to have to do some hocus pocus here just to recreate this spot. So we're actually going to have to say the villain needs to bet 60% of the pot, which is roughly what they bet here. They bet... 15 into 24, right? So about B60. So we're going to have to lock that in and say that this is the only sizing and we're going to have to rebuild the tree. So let me redo this sim and we'll see what happens to the rest of the game tree. In this sim then, the solver is only allowed to bet 60% of the pot and you can see that the bet frequency has dropped right down to 27%. This is pretty normal because you're now putting tons of money into the pot, so hands that were able to bet a lower investment are no longer viable. They become polarization mistakes, right? So things like tens, eights, etc. Interestingly here, the way the solver constructs this range, there's a lot of 9x in here. And this is what we call a hybrid. It's actually getting a fold from better hands, getting called by hands it's doing okay against, and then cleaning up some equity, getting some useful fold equity as well. So kind of three reasons to bet these hands, and that's why they look like they could be Weird polarization mistakes here, King-9, Jack-9, 10-9, but actually they're not. I'd say they're closer to a bluff than anything else. And then, yeah, you have to be pretty selective. Ace is always slow playing. The strategy is just quite difficult to play because you have to be really quite precise with it in order to not make big mistakes, especially if you're just starting out and don't have a lot of grounding in poker theory. So interestingly, we are able to play some raise here in response to this on the flop. In-game, I wasn't. I was just playing call only, and I think that's that's kind of normal and intuitive. And I wouldn't think that you lose really any EV by not playing any raises here. If you made me guess about the composition of this CBET range in real life, I would I would want to say that it's just stronger than it should be, right? That it's just going to have too much ace-king and ace-queen in there and ace-jack and stuff like that, and pocket nines is going to be in there way more often than that. And I just don't think you're going to see second pair doing this i don't think you're going to see 9x doing this i don't think humans are finding these hybrid bets the solver is using so anyway we did call and as you can see i've put some jacks into this calling range because we're a little bit deeper here so we do have all the combos of jacks and tens so obviously calling the jacks on the flop being solver approved we have the six of diamonds on the turn villain checks and yeah third pot the sizing we went for here the most common at this SPR, urgency, a key carrot poker school term. We use that a lot. Right off the bat from grade one lecture two on value betting, you know, we'll, we set the scene with urgency and investment ceilings and things like that. Don't think, by the way, that grade one of the carrot poker school is too easy for you. It almost certainly isn't. Some really strong players have taken that grade and said, that's really shored up a lot of the cracks in my foundation. So definitely start with grade one if you're taking carrot poker school this year. And our hand is always betting, and that's just because it wants to start approaching that investment ceiling. This is not a combo that we want to slow play. It's unblocking the main thing that we're trying to get paid off by, which is, of course, ace -X, you know, throughout turn river here. So we do go for third pot. Interestingly, with ace-king, villain can jam. And this is something really typical of these SPRs, that hands that are strong but vulnerable, like ace-king, you know, our, our bluffing range is drawing kind of live in some places against this hand. These kinds of hands are actually fast playing, whereas if villain was to get here with pocket aces, now of course they don't because they're not meant to bet the flop, but that is more an example of a hand that would actually slow play on this node if it got here. You can see that ace-jack is, is another one that's just jamming a lot here. If this term is rainbow, you'd probably see less of that, that jamming going on. There's also some weird, like, bluff jams with the jack 10 these are just things that humans are just not they're just not going to put you to the test in this way they're just not going to like find this hand that's blocking your value and is redrawing against some of your bet calls and ship it you know that being a mix of ship and fold is also absurd like in the real world jack 10 of spades is not indifferent between jamming and folding it's probably better just to fold after the opposition's called your big bet on the flop right you don't want to make that play in real life i don't think on this note not at all anyway so 
we did decide to bet in Villain Cold and the river came the Queen of Clubs. So just to remind you what this hand is looking like here, we went ahead and bet this sizing on the turn, which is closer to third pot than anything else. And then the Queen of Clubs came on the river. Villain checked, we jammed, they gave the speech about how I was Jarrett Man and then called because who would want a full ace king against Jarrett Man? But I, I want to test my hypothesis that this call is horrible. No offense, Villain, but that is my hypothesis. It may not be theoretically, I think it will be exploitatively. Let's start with what the solver thinks about this, in theory, on the Queen of Clubs River. I mean, it can't love a call down here with Ace-King, can it? No, it's actually just mostly folding. So obviously with Jacks, we are just shoving. There's no other sizing here going on at this SBR. And Ace-King is meant to fold. EV-wise, okay. It's never going to be a huge punt, although some combos, especially with the King of Clubs, appear to be... Minus 37 chips, minus 4 big blinds. It's not a lot. In a gigantic pot, that's kind of, you know, water droplets in the ocean. That's not the expression. Raindrops in the ocean. I don't know what the expression is. It's something like that. It's easily going to be eradicated based on real world conditions, right? So this hand should fold. And that's assuming I'm finding all of these bluffs. So sure enough, Queen 10 is going for it almost always. 10-9 is betting turn and then going for it. What are the other bluffs here? Let's just turn on the EV view so it's easy to see them. 9-8. 9-8 going for a bet here as well. Yep. And 9-8 betting turn is a bluff. Just super unlikely that humans do this. This call with Ace-King. This call that Villain makes with Ace-King here. I'm going to be really frank about this. Is awful. It's awful against pool. It's probably awful against me because I confess I'm not betting my jack x enough as a bluff on the turn and then following through river on the queen. I'm just not finding that often enough. Queen 10 I think I'll find here. But even then, I don't know if I even fancy it against humans. Like as much. I think humans are going to over defend this spot because they have high absolute hand strength. So what villain said in chat here, which, you know, I wish I'd recorded the session. I didn't, but he said, I can't exploitatively fold this versus you, Jarrett, man. It's very wrong on lots of levels. Firstly, I'm not Jarrett, man, as we've already discussed. Sorry about that, guys. I do my best, but I'm not Jarrett, man. And secondly, I don't think this call is even good against Jarrett, man. It's not good in GTO. Like, if you made me guess, like, is Jarrett, man, over bluffing or under bluffing this spot? I would say he's under bluffing, no offense. Jarrett Man, if you're watching this, like, give me a shout. Jarrett Man has been on my streams before, actually. Not appearing on the streams. But I'm pretty sure he's been in the chat before, saying hello and stuff. So I think he knows who I am. Jarrett Man knows Carrot Man. Possibly. So, that must mean I'm mega famous. Like, ridiculously famous. But anyway, I think this play is awful. Like, I think this is a really good way to lose money. And I think a lot of you guys will make this play. Not all of you, but I think some of you are going to make this play because you're going to say something like, well... Ace-King is too far up my range. It looks good in absolute terms. Ace-King becomes a bluff catcher. It becomes a hand that can only beat bluffs, that can't beat value. And then your question becomes, how often is the pool bluffing? If you find yourself calling with Ace-King in this spot, you don't deserve to play the game and you don't even deserve to play the telling Carrot Man from Jarrett Man game because he got that wrong too. But let alone play the poker game. This is a spot that you've got to check fold against humans. You are losing 35, 40 big blinds. Something absurd by making this call down here with Ace-King. I don't have much else to say. Good thing GG is anonymous with its hand histories. Because, yeah, I'm going to call this play out. I'm going to say that regardless of who your opponent is, if your opponent is a mortal and not a solver, this is a bad call. Hope this video was useful. We are launching a subscription service soon on CarrotCorner.com. Head over there. Check out our courses. Let me know what you think of this video. If you like these short form content videos of like 10-15 minutes, I'll make more of them with single hand reviews. Let me know if you want them. Hit the like button if you want them. The more likes, the more chance I will repeat this. See you on the next video. Bye bye. In case you forget, Carrot Man. Not Jarrett Man. See you later.